morning, guys. Happy Friday. It's Erica with Not Your Average EC. Just woke up, have a day off. We've got bedhead. We're going to talk about knives because who doesn't want to talk about knives early in the morning on a day off? Today, we're going to talk about Spider Co. and why I have come to learn that this may or may not be the best company, like, on the market right now, essentially, which sounds crazy coming from me because I used to hate Spider Co. Hate, hate, hate them with a fiery passion. And now I love them. So let's kind of talk about my Spider Co. journey real quick and what has changed because a lot has changed, especially recently. So way back in the before times, as my friend would say, I'm talking like five, six, seven years ago. I hated Spyderco. I hated them. I tried um, some of their cheaper, like, Chinese knives way back then. Uh, the Tenacious, the Cat, the Chicago, uh, the Persistence, the Tenacious, all of those kind of, like, budget Chinese knives that they made. And they were garbage, honestly. Like, let's be realistic. The Tenacious is the only one that you can kind of sort of get a good one. Uh, especially way back then. The rest were just garbage, right? So used a couple of those, um, tested them, beat the crap out of them. They were, they were absolute garbage. Uh, then I tried <clears throat> a little bit later moving on to the Delica. Back then I had a gray one. It had VG10 steel. And again, it was just um, not up to par with what I was expecting. It was uh, just kind of like cheap. Um, it, I remember it like breaking on me. The steel did not hold an edge. I just was like, wow, what the fuck? What the fuck is going on? Like this sucks. Um, didn't like that one, got rid of it. Then I got a Blurple um, S110V pair of three. And that one I recall just being, it was like a little like chippy to me, a little brittle. And I remember using the knife and it would just kind of like chip out on me. Now granted I was not nearly as good as at sharpening way back then as I am now so that also uh, is part of it probably but it was just it was a little it was a little too much for me that was not the steel for me. And I remember the prices being a little high for what I was getting in my opinion and I was just like what what is the obsession here? What is the Spider Co obsession? Um, I could not understand why. Um, and, you know, then I started kind of like getting into the Instagram thing. Uh, you obviously see a ton of spider codes there. And then I started seeing like, you know, they do a lot of like exclusives. They do a lot of sprint runs, stuff like that. Now, back then that used to kind of piss me off because it's like, um, if I want a knife from you, I just want it to be like available. Like if I'm going to start like putting my money into your company, I want to be able to like buy the knives and the, just the consistent sprint runs and exclusives and blade hq exclusive and dlt and you can only get it for a limited time and we're never gonna make it again um i've never been a fan of that type of marketing i've never been a fan of that type of hype i understand small like family-owned companies or like uh you know like somebody making stuff in their garage doing like drops like that's completely different like if you're if you're making something handmade or machine made in like your garage and you do drops, I totally understand that. You can't have a full production line if you're that small. Like that's different. But Spider Co. as a massive, massive, massive company purposely doing exclusive steels with exclusive colors and only like 250 of them and dropping them only once every 10 years. Like I'm not the biggest fan of that. That's completely different. And that's just like straight marketing and like doing something because you know they're going to sell out and you know people are going to jump on it because we're crazy. So like, I I've never been a fan of that. So that added to my hatred. And then just the fact that like they're overpriced and um, they kind of reminded me of like overpriced gas station knives, essentially. That was just like, this is, this company's ridiculous. They do a lot of dumb stuff. Um, <clears throat> so I hated Spyderco for a very, very, very long time. I didn't use any of their knives for years. I sold all of mine. I just didn't use them. They didn't, uh, they didn't satisfy me. Right. And then I made the YouTube channel like a year ago and people were just obsessed with the idea of me testing Spyderco knives. Uh, so I finally caved and I bought, this is the first one I bought. Uh, go figure an exclusive knife joy 
in um, S35VN, right? Special colorway, special exclusive, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is the only one that I could kind of find that I like liked at the time. There was one on Knife Joy and I picked it up and um, I decided to test it because you guys were just like dogging me to test a pair of three on the channel and just try to like destroy it basically. Especially because you guys knew I hated them. So I picked this up, I tested it for a month and um, right off the bat when I started testing, I was like, ooh, I have been wrong for a very long time for hating Spyderco. I've, I've been wrong. And I admitted that on many videos. I was like, guys, you were right. I was wrong. Like, there's something here. I'm starting to understand the love. So one of the first things that I noticed when I was testing this like a year ago was the heat tree. So this is S35 VN. Now my previous experience with S35 was that it was very glassy. I did not like that I couldn't get it to have a bite. Stop eating the bed, please. Oh God, this dog. <clears throat> Let's just veer off for a second. So Kane is currently trying to eat the actual bed. That's the tearing noise that you hear. He's like, whoops, sorry. Um, he's currently actually eating our bed. <clears throat> okay, so the show must go on. Um, I immediately noticed that this S35 was different. So I had used S35 from Chris Reeve. I've had this Sebenza for quite some time. It's really beat up. This is one that I used for many, many years. Let's just, come on. Oh, there's a lot of snail trails that it doesn't want to pick up, but this is a Chris Reeve small 21 in S35 that I had used for years and years and years. And I love the knife, but boy, does it need a lot of maintenance because that steel just is soft. It's, it's treated soft. It's glassy. It doesn't hold a bite, right? So that was like my impression of S35. So when I got this and started testing it, um, it kind of like blew my mind. I was like, wait, this is what S35 can do? It can be toothy. It can be, um, like fine, but also toothy and like a working edge for a long time. Like since when, right? Since when? Because <laughs> this, you know, you pay, back then these were like $325 or something and it doesn't really hold an edge, like end of story. This... I didn't need to sharpen for so freaking long. It was like, what the flip? So I noticed right off the bat that maybe the obsession with Spyderco had to do with the heat treat. Maybe they've got a really good dialed in heat treat for their steels and they kind of know what they're doing with those, right? Stop. Um, so that was like the first thing. Then I realized that the ergonomics and the, the blade profile and the grind and the, and the shape, the, ge the geometry is really a selling point with these, right? So. This thing was cutting, slicing, etc., for days, for a week without any touch-up. Um, it just kept going. And everything about the design and the geometry lends it to just work for you with minimal maintenance for extended periods of time, right? So like another huge selling point. And this might sound silly, but I'm not kidding. This spidey hole, in my opinion, is one of the best um, like deployment methods in the world ever. It's big and annoying sometimes, uh, in terms of like cutting specific thick materials. However, with gloves on, with anything like literally this spidey hole is genius. I'm so sorry for like the consistent scratching in the background. The dogs are actually insane every morning. One of them's growling, the other two are wrestling on the floor at my feet. Stop. Um, they just don't stop. It is nonstop. So there are just a lot of like selling points about this knife that, wow, the dogs are like literally crazy. I'm going to kick one of them out. Let's do the usual. Okay. Yep. So they're crazy. Let's see who we can kick out here. Mr. Bibbs. Go on. Okay. Let's try this yet again. Okay. So there are a lot of Selling points with Spider Co's that I was finally starting to understand. Um, I tested this for a whole month and at the end I was actually obsessed. 
I just could not believe that their heat treat was so good. The geometry was fantastic. They, it's just like a winner, right? A winner. And I admitted that, you know, I had really slept on Spyderco. I was too quick to judge them. And um, I was, I was wrong, man, because these are fantastic knives. And then I started, you know, looking into other models that I could test for the channel because people wanted me to test more. And also they're just great tools. Like these actually do work for me. They work for, work very well. So why not have more in the collection, right? Um, and now, you know, fast forward to present times, in my opinion, Spyderco is kind of one of those companies right now where um, there's not too much we can say about them negatively. So there's a lot going on in the community right now. We're seeing a lot of true colors from a lot of companies. And honestly, at least right now, most of them suck. Like it's just a bad time in the world with everything. Um, like not to be a downer, but like a lot of things suck right now. Inflation is brutal. Uh, you know, everything is difficult right now, right? Um, and we're seeing a lot of um, uh, like poor things coming from knife companies and it's really hard to find a company that you can kind of like stick with that doesn't have a crap ton of flaws right now so I've really been kind of like researching Spyderco because nobody's really talking poorly about them you know like the, the the big companies right now a lot of them are you know having issues we've got the Rick Hinderer thing we've got the Microtech thing uh let's not forget some of the crap that Benchmade has pulled especially when they released the bailout and like the catcher testing was a complete like joke and a lie. And like, I don't forget things like that, right? Like I have bench maids, but they're, they're sus and they pull some like shady shit. Um, other than Spyderco being annoying in terms of marketing, they've been pretty transparent. And it does seem like when we make complaints about things, they actually like listen and change stuff. And like, aside from being so annoying with the exclusives and the sprint runs, they're not necessarily doing any like shady shit. Like, they're pretty clear. And honestly, their heat treat seems to be uh, some of the best I've ever experienced. Just ever, 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 ever. So, like, I've really been looking into Spyderco. I have purchased quite a few of them, especially for the channel and for testing. I've used a whole bunch of... <laughs> Stop! A whole bunch of their steels. Um, and they're just kind of the best, guys. I mean, uh, Benchmade, it's a hit or miss. Uh... And I, and I feel like Benchmade and Spyderco are very much in the same tier, right? They're, they're kind of the same prices. They're kind of the same knives. They're just like, they're very comparable. Um, but Spyderco blows Benchmade out of the water. I will tell you that right now. And I am having a hard time kind of like dedicating my time and money to anything else other than Spyderco right now. I'll be honest. They're the ones making improvements. They're the ones uh, being innovative. They're the ones being transparent and honest and listening to what we're saying and like adapting to what we need. Uh, they're kind of taking over and I fully support it. And I would have never in a million trillion years ever thought that I would be saying this stuff. Ever. But like you have to admit when you were wrong, right? Like, and I was wrong. Spyderco is basically the best right now in terms of like mass production um but high quality edc knives especially their their colorado stuff their uh taiwan stuff guys there's uh, even their japanese stuff like uh there's not a lot else right now on the market that you can really put your money into in that tier of knives um I will say I think Hogue is really slept on. I need to get into those. I need to look into that. But um, Spyderco's the best right now. I really do think that in terms of mass production, quality knives, Spyderco's the best. I have so many Spyderco's now. I'm obsessed. They're just fantastic. They're really good work knives. And their heat treat uh, is on point. On fucking point. I would have never, ever thought that I could have S35... VN blade steel for half the price of a Chris Reeve and this outperforms any day of the week this could have gone the entire month without sharpening absolutely I sharpened it for testing purposes when I was using my Sebenza 21 as a work knife this had to be I'm not kidding sharpened every single night 
every night doing the same hardcore work as this. This one had to be uh, touched up, sharpened, etc. every single night. Not kidding. So it's like, you know, they're just... I'm not saying that, like, Spyderco's better than Chris Reeve. Like, this is treated way differently for completely different reasons. But, like, if I have this one and I have this one for my line of work, this is the one that's getting picked all day, every day. This S35 with this heat treat is way better than this for me. So... Um, yeah, guys, I don't know. Spyderco is really taking over the world here, and I stand behind it. I never thought I would say that. I, I really didn't, but they have some of the best knives. So thank you guys for pushing me to use them and to test them, because um, <laughs> if I didn't, at this point, I, w I would not have very many companies to choose from. Like, everything is kind of, like, in the toilet. They're, like, floating turds right now. And the only one that's really, like kind of sliding under the radar and not doing anything shitty for the most part is Spyderco. And they have apparently fixed like their warranty. Like one, one huge thing I had an issue with was like you couldn't get parts from Spyderco and you couldn't like disassemble your knife without it like voiding the warranties basically. And they like loctited the shit out of the screw. So like you couldn't do shit to it. Now it's different. Like I did just get a Maximate pair of three like two weeks ago. No Loctite, easily disassembled, that's great. And also, apparently now they changed the warranty where, like, you can maybe take the blade out, clean it, put it back together or something, and, like, maybe they'll send you pivot screws. Uh, don't, don't quote me on that. People have just told me that the warranty is more flexible now than it used to be. So that's cool. But, yeah, guys, um, I was wrong, and you were right. And thank you for that, because, yeah... We, we need something good in the community right now. We really do. Um, so yeah, that's my rant about uh, why Spyderco is superior right now to basically anything else on the market. Uh, thanks for watching. Go use your shit. Beep boop boop. Go use your shit. Um, learn how to sharpen your knives. And I will see you on the next video. Love you all.